Welcome to my lab. I'm Drew Collip. In today's lab, we're going to make an agrose gel. We will run some prepared samples that we digested with restriction enzyme, and we will walk you through the process right from the start, from your powdered chemicals all the way to editing your image for publication. Let's get into it then. We're going to make a 0.8% agrose gel. I've weighed out 0.8 grams of agrose. I place it into the Erlenmeyer flask, and here I have 100 mils of one times TAE. We're gonna add that in. Make sure you don't use water. That will not work. Also, oftentimes there's 10 times TAE in the lab. Make sure you're using one times TAE. The agrose will not dissolve in the TAE directly. It must be heated. We'll use a microwave at 70% power for about a minute and 45 seconds, maybe two minutes until you see it boiling. We will then take it out with a heat glove. Here it is. You can see it has dissolved in the TAE. We must wait for it to cool. It's cool enough when you can pick it up with your bare hand and it does not hurt. In the meantime, we can set up the casting tray. There are fancy mechanisms we can use to seal the sides. I prefer masking tape. Rip off a piece and put it on the bottom first. We want to seal that edge so there's no leaks. So press it down and seal along the edge there. It might be higher than this, so we're going to add a second piece of tape above that. Make sure the tape sticks together. We've blocked off one side, you can see. Now we have to do the other side. Repeat the process here, making sure it seals around. If there are leaks, it's no good. Now both sides of the casting tray are now sealed with masking tape. We want to make sure there are no leaks. If it leaks, we have to redo it. Here's a comb. We use this to make notches in the gel. We put it in before it, we pour it, and then it dries around it. It can go in the end here. It can also go in the middle. You can see this is how we're going to set it up. And eventually we'll pour our gel into here. Now, before we pour our gel, we must add a chemical to the gel. Five microliters, we're going to add in of what's known as red safe. This chemical helps us visualize the DNA inside the gel. In the old days, we used to use something called euthidium bromide. It is actually very toxic. We've switched now to red safe. It's quite safe, as the name suggests. Five microliters is all I will need. We add that to the gel when it is cooled sufficiently. You can see I can now pick it up with my hand. It is still warm, but it doesn't hurt my hand. We're going to gently swirl it. We don't want to make bubbles because that will end up going into the gel. You can see I can hold it with my hand. It does not hurt, but it's still warm. Now it's ready to pour. Here we pour the gel. We're going to pour the entire contents into this casting tray. There are some bubbles coming out. Don't worry about that. I got a tip for you later on. Sometimes we can use the comb to try and push those bubbles down to the end. If they're at the end touching the masking tape, it's not a big deal. This comb won't work. So here's something you can do. Get yourself a little micro pipette tip and you can shepherd them down to the end. That way we don't have them inside our gel. Much better. Now we wait for it to solidify. You can see it's clear right now. This is our electrophoresis unit. You can see there's a black and a red wire connected to them. This lid slides off. There'll be electricity running through here. We don't want to be able to open it and electrocute ourselves. Once our gel has solidified, you can see it is more of an opaque shade now. We can now remove the masking tape. Be careful, the gel might slide out of this unit. Remember, it's like jello. If you hold it upside down, it could slide right out, and then you have to start all over again. 
So gently remove the masking tape from both sides. I prefer to leave my comb in the gel until I've filled the tray with TAE. We'll place this into the electrophoresis unit. We'll load the DNA into where the slots where the comb is and we'll run an electric field through there. DNA will want to run to the positive electrode, the red one. So we place it in here. This is the red electrode. DNA here will run to red. It'll head towards the positive electrode because DNA is negatively charged. We'll now get the 1 times TA, the same solution we made the gel with. We'll gently pour it into the tray. Be careful. On each side there is a wire. It is platinum. It is very thin, very breakable, and very expensive. We just fill enough so it covers the gel. Now we can take the comb out. I prefer to take the comb out now because I find that if you take it out early, you might get air bubbles trapped inside those wells. This way, the TAA fills it immediately. The DNA will be loaded in these wells right here. We will start loading the gel with ladder. This is pre-cut DNA of known size. It already has the loading buffer with it. We'll get the sample down to the bottom and we'll load a small aliquot of it. We'll load that into the first well. I find two hands are easier to stabilize. We're going to take this, we're going to place it into the well underneath, and then once we have our pipette in the well, we will gently dispense the sample. I've now zoomed in on it. Here we have uncut plasmid. I've added a small aliquot to a small amount of loading buffer. The loading buffer has some glycerol in it. It helps the sample sink to the bottom of the well. We'll use two hands, stabilize it, get that little bubble out of the end. Now we'll submerge it and fill that little well we made with the comb with our sample. You can see it gently sinks to the bottom. This sample is Echo R1 cut plasmid. Again, we have a small aliquot and I've added loading dye to it. We'll gently add this in, place it into the well and dispense gently. You can see it sinks to the bottom. This sample is the same plasmid cut with a different restriction enzyme. This one is called Hindi 3. Load that in. Oh, missed a bit. Not the best loading there. <laughs> so you can see what happens if you dispense a bit too soon, you'll lose some. Lost a very small amount. This sample is cut with both Hindi 3 and Echo R1, both restriction enzymes with the plasmid. Oh, you can see a few mistakes there, but most of it gets into the well and it sinks down to the bottom because of the loading dye. Now we'll run our gel. The lid goes on. We can see red on this side. We want to make sure it runs to red. The DNA runs toward the positive electrode because DNA is negatively charged. You can see once we close this, we cannot get in. The DNA will run down there in the electric field and we will not electrocute ourselves. Now we plug it in. Here's our power pack. Make sure you put them in the right slots, black to black, red to red. We're going to run this at 120 volts. You can see we can change it. The volt light is on. We'll set to 120. You can set a timer. I usually like to watch it. We press the little run guy. And you can see the power pack goes to 120. Electricity is now flowing through there. You can double check. You can see the electricity is producing bubbles as it breaks the water molecules apart. Coming off the wire on this side as well. Always double check to make sure you see the bubbles. This is an indication there's no problem with your setup. This can now take a very long time to run, an hour or more. Oftentimes you do something else while this is running. You can actually watch the dye go into the gel itself.
make sure you watch it, it goes in the right direction. If you set up your electrodes wrong, they'll run off the end very quickly. So carefully sit back and watch until the dye enters the gel as it's pulled towards the red electrode. As you can see, this is not very exciting. So what I've done is I've decided to zoom in and speed up 5,000 times. So hopefully you can see the dye go into the gel. You can see the dye slowly enter the gel as it's pulled towards the positive electrode. The DNA is coming with it. You can't see the DNA right now. It's invisible, but it's coming along for the ride. You can see there's a blue and a purple dye. They run at different rates. I've now run this gel for about half an hour. I probably should go another half an hour, but I'm going to stop it now for the purposes of this video. We turn off our power pack, remove the electrodes, and open the box. You can see here's our gel. If you look, you can see the dye has run in there. You can see the purple and the blue dye run at different rates, and the DNA is somewhere between the two. Better to run it for a bit longer until the purple dye gets closer to the other end. We are now going to visualize this gel. We have a light box here. Now when you remove this, please be very careful. It's very easy to break this. It's very wet and very slippery. So take it out, holding the ends with your fingers, and then gently slide it on. We have the gel on a light box now. With Red Safe, we can use this blue LED. We turn it on. You can't see anything right now. It's illuminating the red safe inside the gel. We add this filter and there you have it. You can see the latter, our uncut plasmid and our cut plasmid. Smaller fragments run further down the gel compared to larger fragments. You wanna image this. Be careful though, when you're using the gel, you can see it's very easy to break. I did this on purpose. It rips like jello. Particularly where the wells are, it's a weak point. You can see it tears very easily. So be very careful. You can use a smartphone, you can image it. Bring this to your computer and we can edit it using whatever software you like. I had the numbers for the ladder. I can put the ladder along the side and we can see our uncut plasmid, Pakura. It's super coiled, so it's quite large. We then do Echo R1. There's a single cut, it's a linearized plasmid. So you can see it looks a little higher up. We then cut with Hindi 3. There must've been two sites creating two fragments. And we use Hindi 3 and Echo R1. I believe Hindi 3 and Echo R1 are very close to each other. So there is a very tiny fragment you don't even see. When you label it, please call it a figure and give it the appropriate description describing what you see in there. Don't just call it gel. That's all for today. Until next time.